guys, how's it going? So we're down at our local community college for planting day number two. So we are gonna be starting up here in the gym bed where we planted all of the Atlas roses last year. And I can't remember how many are actually in this bed, but a lot. Aaron, do you remember how many roses we planted, like 80? Yeah, 90, um, or was it even over 100? I don't remember, but let me show you because, oh my word, are they doing amazing. So they start right over here in this corner and then they swing around and go all the way down to the sign down there. And the cool thing about uh, the Atlas roses is that they're one of the school colors. So the school colors are orange, blue, and white. Uh, so that's kind of the theme we're sticking with in this flower bed. There were some other shrubs in this area. It was kind of an untouched area for a while. Uh, so they removed like some old dogwoods and things like that. We asked them to keep the boxwoods because we thought it might be some nice winter structure. But then with these Atlas roses bringing that orange color, we thought we would add in some blue, white, and then also some potato vine for a nice striking green. Before I show you all the plants, I just want to get close on one of these roses because when we planted them they were tiny like they've already put on some growth which is amazing let me walk down this way we'll just take a look here yeah look at these and they're full of buds that's so exciting they take such good care of stuff you guys it's amazing okay so here are a few of the plants we brought both pickups today so we've got the uh, superbina imperial blue so this one is a brand new superbina for this year i was so excited about this because i think that this is going to look great up against the atlas roses so we've got a lot a lot of these because this is a big bed it's big so we need need it a lot in order to fill it up and then we've got three flats of the sweetheart line that i thought we'd just tuck in every once in a while on along the edge and then in here we have some supertunia vista snowdrift uh, so we'll mix that in with the superbinas and that little touch of lime green. I think it's going to be really pretty, simple, but striking. One thing I completely forgot about this flower bed is that it does have landscape fabric in it. So we have our knives here. We're going to have to cut little holes in the landscape fabric for every single one of these plants. So it's going to take a little while. And my friend Amy is back here to help us today. So I'm just going to place everything. We're going to cut holes, get them in the ground. We're going to use all of our regular amendments, the biotone and the land and sea compost. And then I'll show you what it looks like. Placement is done and you guys this is going to be so pretty now again kind of like with the entryway beds I did place these probably closer than you need to uh, But we're kind of shooting for some high impact by graduation Which is just a few weeks away and I think we're gonna we're gonna get there because these plants do grow pretty quickly But you can see the nice drift of snow drift <laughs> in the back and then we came in with the superbina Imperial blue which will be lower than the snow drift and and then I just dotted the sweetheart lime, sweet potato vine along the edge, just every few feet, just for a little kind of grounding, cool color. And if those roses are blooming at the time of graduation, along with everything else, it's going to be perfect. I cannot wait to see what happens here. Now the real work begins, and that is scooting the mulch away and cutting the landscape fabric for every single one of these plants. Let me show you how we do it. So you can see I already did it right here just to kind of test, because typically we do just an X in the landscape fabric and tuck the folds underneath. But what we're doing this time is we're scooting the mulch away. Nice thick layer. And then we're just doing a straight line and one line that meets it. So, we just have the two flaps there. So we have to do that for every single hole before we go along with our augers to dig the holes and then we'll add our amendments and then plant. So this part is gonna probably take the longest of all the parts. <laughs>
It's all done, you guys, and it looks so beautiful. I really like the bright pop of the sweet potato vine, kind of drawing you all the way down. And keep in mind, these supertunias, like we gave them quite a bit of space-ish, but they will get massive. And then the superbenas will fill in. It's just gonna be so beautiful. I cannot wait to show you later on down, down the road this season. Rosa's already watering everything. So yeah, we're gonna have a really happy flower bed up here. And you can see that the flower bed just swings all the way around here to the doors. So we started in with the annuals right there, and then we've gone all the way around to the other side. And the nice part about this project, because it was kind of difficult with the landscape fabric, it took a lot longer, uh, but the sun wasn't out. We've had a beautiful overcast morning. In fact, I think we're due for a really windy night and day tomorrow. So not looking forward to that, but I'm loving the overcast. So this is the other end here and I stopped the very last annual is right there. You can see the nice black lace elderberries and then a view from this end. Next, we're gonna head down to the baseball fields to plant up seven massive containers. Uh, they already have like crab apple trees in the center, but we're gonna plant below them. And then we have three other full sun containers we're gonna be planting as well. All right, guys, so we're down here at the baseball fields. We've got seven large containers. You can see a couple of them behind me. Uh, they all have large trees in them. We've got some gorgeous stuff to plant around the base. Last year we did plant the blue salvia and then some supertunias, which it was an experiment because with trees out here, kind of shading the base a little bit throughout the day, we didn't know how they would do. They did pretty well. But this year, I'm thinking the surefire rose begonias will be a really good option because they can do sun or shade and the sweet potato vine are kind of the same. So this is the surefire rose begonia. We're gonna put seven of these around the tree and then we're going to put seven of these around the outside. And you know, sweet potato vines get big, these get big. So I think it'll be a beautiful bright show. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven pots to plant. So here we go. we just finished up and I think they turned out so pretty. They're all the same, so I'm not gonna go to each individual pot. What I ended up using was eight of the Surefire Rose Begonias because I thought I was gonna do seven of each, but I forgot I had planned 10 <laughs> of each, uh, but eight fit really comfortably around the base of the tree. And then I used all 10 of the Sweet Potato Vine, which these get quite large, but I really want this to be a statement. Uh, and I think it will be, it already looks so bright and fresh. So the surefire rose begonias will fill in about up to here. And then the sweet potato vine will grow in amongst the begonias, but will also trail over the bottom and will eventually probably cover the entire container. You don't even be able to see it. I am gonna walk to this one because I think this tree is really pretty. Got a couple of branches that need to be pruned, but look at this hawthorn. <gasps> Isn't that gorgeous? I need one of these in our garden. So beautiful. I wish it would stay in bloom all season because boy, it looks pretty with the pink kind of echoed down below. Uh, love, love it. Now, Rosa said these trees have been in here for longer than she's been working here, which is seven years at this point. So they're fairly, you know, old trees. Uh, and I'm not sure if these containers are cut on the bottom and they have the ability to grow into native soil or if they're solid, it kind of looks like, like if you look up close, like doesn't that look like it's cut right there? I'm not really sure. Either way, I think these plants are going to do really well and maybe thrive a little bit more than the ones we put in here last year. Because you know, at different times of the day, like the way I'm standing here facing, this side will get morning sun and then it'll be shaded from the tree throughout a good part of the day. And then this other side here will get afternoon sun. But because these two varieties can take both sun or shade, it should be a really compatible blend of plants for that kind of situation. So anyway, the last three containers we're gonna 
do today are in full, full sun. Uh, they're rectangular shaped containers. We'll head to those next. All right, guys, so these last three containers are in full sun. This is the south side of the building. You can see one of them right there. They're all the same size, so 14 inches deep, 68 inches long. We're gonna plant them all up exactly the same uh, so that we've got a little bit of cohesion because these are all kind of spread out in front of different buildings over here. So the first one is right down here. Then we've got one here. And then the third one, which they demolished a building right here. I don't, I don't know exactly what's gonna go on here, but the last one is in front of that building way down there. Got some really pretty stuff that likes full sun, like bubble gum and purple fountain grass and salvia. So we'll get them all planted up and then I'll show you how they look. So they are all done, all planted, and they're all the same. So I'm not gonna walk to each one of them, but I wanted to talk about each one of these plants really quick because right now it looks very open, like I didn't plant maybe enough plants in here, but each one of these gets so big. So we've got the purple fountain grass here, which will grow, you know, it'll probably grow into the window a little bit and they get really wide. And then the annual salvia, this is not a play in the blues like I normally plant. This is an unplugged so blue. Uh, stays a little bit smaller, but will still fill in this whole entire area on this side and will be a nice step down from the purple fountain grass. I love the color. And then we've got a sweet Caroline. Uh, this is a light green sweet potato vine, and this one will get really big. So it will grow over the sides on the back and it will probably make its way all the way over here if the Super Tunia Vista bubblegum doesn't beat it because these also get huge, massive, full of color. Look at my hands, I need to go wash them. Uh, so anyway, I just kind of want to talk about that and how great these specific varieties are to plant in areas where you just don't want to plant a ton, but you want high impact. And that is going to do it for planting day number two down here at the community college. What a gift the weather has been, you guys. I mean, honestly, it's been overcast all day. Last year when we planted these exact same pots, right here on the south side of these buildings. It was 102, I think, full sun, just brutal. And the plants immediately wilted and I got really stressed out about them. And then we had a bunch of wind that night. So this just is wonderful. It's just been a wonderful spring. And this has been such a fun project because they take such great care of things. So it's nice this year to have Rosa. She's just going, kind of going right behind us and watering everything in right when we get done planting it. So it will be really, really fun to bring you guys back down here and give you updates as the season goes on. We do have at least two more planting days down here in different areas, so we'll bring you along for those. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.